Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Vicky May and I am a full-time React developer living in New York City. In today's video, I am going to share with you my origin stories how I landed my first React developer job. Well, React is a front-end JavaScript library that is open sourced by Facebook. And oftentimes you'll hear React along with the other libraries that are very popular, such as Angular or Vue. Learning React and knowing React can actually open you up to a lot of opportunities pretty lucrative opportunities. For those of you who don't know that I actually don't have a computer science degree, I actually had a finance degree and also a minor in MIS, which stands for Management Information System. I actually ended up did not get into finance for some reason. I actually ended up to land a few jobs opportunities as a data analyst. After two years of being a data analyst, to be honest with you, I was getting really bored in my career. I actually started learning a bunch of programming languages like Python and a little bit of C Sharp. And I actually feel like it wasn't really meant for me and I gave up. Not until later when I joined a bunch of hackathons within the company and worked really closely with front-end developers, I discovered React and I discovered JavaScript. The front end and also like the just like the visual side of things really just makes me super super happy and therefore i started to look into that part of programming i actually did extensive of researching on how to become a front end developer Unfortunately, there aren't that many resources out there. I would say that I actually decided to learn it on my own. The experience of me learning to code on my own without any developer's help was extremely tiring and extremely difficult. I wish that at that time, there were someone like me on the YouTube just giving out free contents, but unfortunately during that time, there aren't that many. And finally, I chose to enroll into one of the popular coding boot camps in New York City. That was when I was introduced React as a library for JavaScript. If you break down the timeline of me learning to code, I would say that it's about three months of full-time nine to five, sometimes like 12 hours of learning to code all day, every day, plus six months of intensive interviews with company that landed me this job. From my past experience, I definitely wanted to show you or at least like telling you the things that I've learned that along the way that helped me to land my first React developer job. Tip number one is having a LinkedIn profile as your social presence. I cannot stress enough how important it is to connect with people online and on LinkedIn. The truth is there are so many recruiters on LinkedIn who are hunting for candidates who are also probably like headhunters who are also looking for developers that they might have like opportunities for certain companies. So having that social presence, having that profile picture, having that work experience already laid it out on LinkedIn is going to help you to at least you know, show it to the face of either the recruiters or headhunters or even the hiring managers of that company. I would say that networking is probably the most overlooked thing for people who just started looking for jobs in web development or in software engineering. You don't just rely on that social presence, but also as well attending to career fairs or hackathons or even like tech conferences to be able to connect with other developers. You wanted to skip the HR screening if it's possible and through, you know, either social media presence or through any of the connections that you built previously to lend you a referral and therefore more interview opportunities to land it that dream job that you're looking for. Number two is practicing on interviews. And I 
hate to bring you that. I hate talking about practice on interviews because everybody hates to practice on interviews because it's hard. It makes your brain hurt so 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 much. But it's so important. So I have to keep talking about it because a lot of people just feel like this is the hard part and they kind of just tend to skip it because it's so difficult. But it's so necessary in. The whole job searching process. So let's talk about the interviews for a second. So the interviews are usually three to four rounds of interviews, typically, and the first round is usually the HR screening to just to make sure that you're a normal human being, you're not weird,、um, and we're on track before they set you up with a second rounds of interviews. So for the second and the third rounds of interviews are typically technical interviews. You gotta make sure that you can. Ace those co challenges in order to move to the next round. The last two rounds could be just like meeting up with the team or just figure out where they're gonna assign you to the team. So you might be interviewing with different hiring managers from different teams. Last part of the interviews are probably mostly just like behavioral interviews. They wanted to see how you handle. Difficult situations at your job, and they also will arrange time for you to meet the rest of the teams, like the designers, the QAs, the other developers you might be working with. The last few parts of the interviews aren't as hard, in my opinions. I feel like the hardest part is always the technical interviews, just because the technical interviews are very different、um, depending on the companies. I just get super nervous when I'm on those interviews. One thing that I do wanted to highlight is: do not worry about failing on interviews. Getting rejections from interviews, rejections are super important for you to be able to ace your interviews. I would not say that I'm actually going to pass an interview without failing the interviews. You need to just kind of learn along the way and become a better interviewee. So. That's the idea behind it. Do not feel imposter or sad if you get rejected from interviews. One of the main skills I would say is being able to collaborate with other developers and showing that you have open source contributions, how to use Git version control, and also just like having a profile on GitHub to showcase of your projects and hosting your projects online. Those are the legit skills that you need. To showcase to either recruiters, hiring managers, etc. Other skills like continuous integration, like testings, and also just you know deployment process or just like normal software development process. Those are really important skills to know. For sure, it's really hard to actually get that kind of experience without actually having a real job. But then you kind of get the conceptual understanding of those kind of things, like how important is testing, how do you estimate bugs, or just like regular, normal software development concepts and topics. And knowing those things are gonna help you a ton because when you talk to recruiters or talk to hiring managers, these kind. Of topics is going to come out, and they're going to ask you opinions about those. And if you are able to have your own opinions about those things, will help the other developers or hiring managers to understand that how ready you are for the real world. The last part that I wanted to talk about is how to keep yourself updated in this industry because it changes night and day all the time, especially web development. One of the Most popular way to keep yourself updated for me is to read articles and read blog posts from other developers. I use Udemy if I have some ideas about what the next things that I wanted to learn. You can definitely check out some of my videos about my top recommended Udemy courses. For web development and for Python, in terms of imposter syndrome, it's pretty pretty hard to conquer. To be honest with you, I'm still having imposter syndrome. I'm not gonna lie; it's not the best feelings ever. And the reason for that is because tech is such a broad 
subjects. Like there are so many things that you can learn, and everybody is different, right? Like you can't just learn everything and know everything. Like it's impossible. One thing that I would say is every time when you feel like you're feeling imposter and you're feeling like you don't know something. This is the opportunity for you to learn something new and to find out something that is worth learning. And if you stay till the end of this video, please make sure to leave a comment down below and say that I plan on becoming a React developer this year. So then I know that you stay till the end of the video, and also I know that this video helps you a ton. If you have not checked out any of the other videos that I have about React, I I would highly, highly, highly recommend you to check out those videos because they are gold. Stay safe and adios.